Do you subscribe to this theory in life that like... I can't answer until you tell me. I, I, I know. So okay. I'm setting it up. <laughs> Sorry about that. It, 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 well, I felt pressure well, to, to answer. I have to feel like how... I have to feel good about how I want to ask the theory um, because there's a few ways to do it. Some well, take people... your time because my partner on Friday uh, did a nine-minute uh, setup at one point. Really? You want to think that you I was going to say. The dimmer? You, you, like you. Your boy. You, and I, you needing me back so that your partner talked less, I did not have on my bingo card. Nobody did. Yeah. But your boy, uh, and I don't want to like thumbnail it because he gets mad. Uh, you're going to thumbnail it. So just thumbnail it. Okay? I mean, your relationship is already ruined. He it wants has Steph been Curry traded. Oh, he does? Yeah, and what? I'm saving you the nine-minute setup. It Why? was a but wonderful he, setup. But he's rolling his eyes at you, so he feels misrepresented Because he didn't right want now. me to thumbnail it. No, but, but, you, but you know what you just did, potentially? Uh, it was an encapsulation sensation. No, is what it was. No. <laughs> no, it was a misrepresentation <laughs> sensation. <laughs> Randy, both words. Randy, I'm a big uh, like. Speak for yourself, dude. You got nine you, minutes. No, no. Do you, just yes or no. Do you want Steph Curry traded? I don't want Steph and Curry traded, but I made a case, and I can still make the case that it would be the best thing for the organization. Okay, I don't see. It that, was like, a great case. Yeah, I was juror number eight, and I did fall asleep. You did. <laughs> but now he was, like, can we get some Wadir up in here dude. so that I could <laughs> say something stupid and get myself dismissed? Seriously, can we get some Wadir? He was great. And I'm only making fun of him because I told him privately how great he was, and his case was wonderful. How come you don't do that after our shows? You don't call me and tell me I'm great after our shows. I actually do. No, a you lot. don't. No, you don't. You walk out of here, and you won't even walk with me to the car. That's accurate. Yeah, yeah. I won't walk with you either. But <laughs> anyway, but still, um, anyway, you're anyway. about to set something up. Well, no, are you? Do you subscribe to? Some people call this the like everything works out, or everything happens for a reason. Or things will happen in due time. You know, these these stupid things right. that people say to people when things are, are tough. Fatalism. Like, are, right. do you subscribe to this? Uh, I mean, I, I do. But honestly, if I took a step back and looked at things rationally, no. It's nonsense. Well, but, I don't mean the whole everything happens for a reason. But here's one thing, for example. Okay. I think we've all experienced this. We've all experienced this. And I have to sift through which one I want to pick if I were going to give you an example. But the thing that happens in your life where you're like, oh, my God, this is awful. This is terrible. You could be crying. It could drive you to tears. It could be awful for your family, your job. You're, you're in at least a temporary state of depression. And then two years later, you look back on it and you're like, oof, best thing that ever happened. Tell me you haven't experienced that at least 20 times right, in your life. for sure. All the time, yeah. right? Okay. So, like, the sports example I always use is Steph Curry's ankles. Warriors don't win all those rings if he doesn't hurt the ankles. Period. I firmly believe that. Kevin Durant never plays for the Warriors. Andre Iguodala never plays for the Warriors. Their finances never play out correctly. If Steph's ankles weren't in a spot where uh, he was able to accept a four-year, $44 million contract. Right. If he doesn't accept that, the, none of that stuff happens. You know what I mean? Jimmy Garoppolo's torn ACL. No Nick Bosa. You don't get Nick Bosa. So it happens in sports all the time. Might it be happening for the Giants right now? Dibs, they're all hurt. They're all hurt. They're all gone. What do they have, like... Eight guys on the IIL? Well, let's see. Let's count them up. So, Conforto. Yep. Solaire. Um, Lee. Well, about to be Lee. Uh, Sl Slates. Yep. Bailey just got back. He was Murphy. There. Murphy. Um, forgetting, Snell. Forgetting anyone else? Snell. Sure. About to be back. So, and I won't even go to the Cobb and Robbie Ray because those are uh, too easy. I'm talking about guys who have been playing who are no longer playing. Right. That's a quick six right there, and three of them got hurt yesterday in like an eight-minute span. Jung Hoo Lee um, is, uh, is, as I've put it a few times over the last few weeks, he has been one of the only things so far this year in Giants baseball that makes me smile. He has been one of the only things. The crowd chants his name. He has been, honestly, the only player. Like, there have been other players who've played well. Lamont Wade's played well, etc. We could do this with a few people. Jordan Hicks pitched really well. Kyle Harrison's really starting to come on. 
Like they're they're Doval, there are people. But Jung Hoo Lee is the one where forget the numbers for a second. If you've watched the games, you're like, I I dig it. I dig this. I like the five year deal that they that they signed all of it. There's a lot of positivity around that, and he makes people chant at the ballpark, Jung Hu Lee, Jung Hu Lee. Well, how about now? Based on, and this is not anything to do with specifics because I don't know them for him, but our guy Doc Pandia wrote about the shoulder dislocation in a general sense. And to put it mildly or briefly, here's what you're looking at. If it is something that after the MRI is deemed to not need surgery, generally return to play is six to seven weeks. Okay? So you're talking about a month and a half. Right. At a minimum. July 1st. If it does need surgery, we're probably looking at Jung Hoo Lee missing the rest of the year. This is an unbelievable kick in the shins to the Giants' popularity, watchability, in the standings. This is absolutely devastating news. But what's it going to lead to? Next year, what's it going to lead to? What is it? What avenue does it create for these? River cats that you want to see. What what happens? What happens because of this? Is Elliot Ramos an everyday outfielder? Do we find that out because of this? Um, is Luis Matos an everyday outfielder? Right. Do we find that out because of this? Or are they not? Or I mean, are they not? that to me is as important as, I mean, obviously you want them to be, yes, you're it, you're the guy, and now you're going to be on the team next year, but... To have that knowledge absolutely is important and it's powerful. And I looked at the injury and I've looked at the video time and time and time again. And I can't imagine, and the MRI will determine more than my eyeballs can. But to me, that one looks like he's going to need surgery. And if he doesn't, then good on you. You're a young man. And hopefully it's not a torn labrum, which is what I had. And, you know, when I tore my labrum and my shoulder, it had a recurrence of injury about 14 more times. And at the, at the 14th time, when it wouldn't go back in the socket, then I had surgery. So if he's in a spot where the labrum's torn, maybe you just shut it down now. I'm not saying you give up on the year, but a shoulder injury like that, and that one looked, wow, so dramatic. Yeah, it was not it good. It looked terrible. Yep, yep. And immediately he goes to the ground and he, and he holds it. I'm just hopeful that it's not totally torn and that, you know, six or seven weeks, and you quiet that down, he can come back and play, but that's July 1. That's still missing, like, a good third of the year. Yeah, I mean, more than half the lineup is out. Right. So, I mean, that does. It changes whatever expectation or even hope that um, that that you had, and it didn't, it didn't feel like a lot of the fan base was running on expectations and hope right now anyway. Right. You're 19 and 23. The Dodgers have come to town. I I can't remember, and this I'm even going to put this into last year and the year before. I can't remember in my adult life the last time the Dodgers came to town and the morale leading into the series felt like this. Literally, the majority of fans that I talk to. Their goal for the next three nights is get one. Forget nothing like it. There's your new motto. Giants baseball, get one. And I don't even know if people are hoping for that. It's almost like, come on, man, you got the, the River Cats against the Dodgers? Right. What, what are our chances? Yamamoto, are we even going to get a hit tonight? But it's baseball. And you just don't you don't know what's gonna what's gonna come out of this. It, right. This is a dark cloud right now. Super this is dark. A really, really dark cloud. And it's weird because so many fans have wanted uh, and clamored for the young guys, and now you get the young guys, and you get them in a way that you didn't think that you were gonna get it, and you didn't want to get it this way with Soler out and Slater out and Jung Hu Lee gets hurt yesterday. But if you look at the lineup tonight. You or even throughout the course of the series, you might have five or six River Cats in the lineup, 
and I count Sable in there, and you've got Wisely and Schmidt and Matos and Ramos, you might have a team that is completely your AAA lineup from four weeks ago. Well, gosh, you got to figure that, uh, I mean. You You're playing figure, the lefties tonight. You know, right, so you got to figure Matos and Ramos are both in. Yep, Lamont um, Wade probably leads off. Um, right, and and maybe Wisely does play second base. I mean, I, I imagine Tyro would would still play. But, yeah, you're going to have Casey over at short. You still got Chappie. Yep. Chappie's in there. But, yeah, you're going to have at least four. You're going to have four cats. Right. I think. Four cats for sure. And, you know, as you go, get through the series, you're going to see a lot of cats. And that's why I was saying on the thread, and I didn't explain it great, and Grandy came immediately over the top. You and, don't need to apologize for your thread. He just disagreed with you. Apologize. Yeah, you're, you're, you're. Like clearly, I didn't know this because I was off in 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 Wonderland. But sure, the two of you clearly had some damage done to your relationship. We on had Friday. a great show. And that's fine. You can. He had a great show. We've had great shows and come out with relationship damage. That it happens. It happens. Right? Have you ever gone on a great date, but there's some damage there? Like there's right, right, right. So I don't know what the hell happened between the two of you, but it felt like it came out. It like I didn't look at that as a thing. He just was like, I disagree with you. I took tell, it as a thing. Tell everybody what he disagreed with. He disagreed with the notion that I was saying that I think that this is a big series for Farhan, and it doesn't mean that the Giants have to win these games, but these young pups, they have to come in and look like they belong in some way. Now, why? Why would they have to do that between now and Wednesday night? Well, it's not like a make or break, but this is a big moment for the whole make the kids play or let the kids play movement and you know, Farhan's, this is Farhan's baby now, the farm. And, and yeah, three games like, will not determine everything about these guys or Farhan, but in this moment against the Dodgers at home, I think that it's important that these youngsters don't look overmatched. Okay, but but these guys are, are largely not even his picks. Schmidt was. Right. Ramos was not. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Grandy Lucas, will you look up, was Matos a Farhan guy? I, I, I don't think that he was. I don't think that he was. I think he's been in the system for, for quite a while. For me, it's not as much about him drafting them as this is his team. This is his well, farm sure. system. So, I mean, if, if you didn't love these guys, you could have Joey Barted them, and how's that working out for you? But these are guys that you continue to have in your farm system, and Farhan's now been here for a number of years, so by proxy, these are his guys. Um, by the way, like Joey Bart, I know it's become a popular thing to like, oh my gosh, Joey Bart's in Pittsburgh crushing it. He's hitting 205. Is it like how many homers? Uh, Five? Uh, three. Oh, only three? Yeah, yeah. All right. They call it a Bart dart. He got, he, he had a little weak, had a little weak when he got there, but, um, you know, and not even starting for him. Yeah. I have an answer for the Luis Matos question. Oh. Uh, he was signed as an international free agent in July 2018. Farhan became Giants president of baseball ops in November of that same year. So yeah, he's he not, not a, a Farhan, Farhan guy. guy. The only Farhan guy who's up from the minors this week is Casey Schmidt. Uh, and so, right. As far and, as who he's drafted. Right. But again, not, I would assign these guys to him. If he's been in the organization for six years. No, I'm not disagreeing with you there, but like the for me... Um, there's two words that, that, that go here, draft and develop. And, and so, right, yeah, right. he didn't draft them, but yes, he's overseeing the development of them, or as you're pointing out, uh, move on from them if they're not going to be the guy. But I like, that's not to me, that's not like, let's grab one person. And I know he's the president of baseball ops, but he is not the only scout in the organization. He is not the one who is overseeing every minor league. They have a director of minor league operations also. Uh, Kyle Haynes, I think, is his name. And you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to put every single person in the entire, all the minor league systems and be like, all right, let's see if the lights are too bright and if they are, like, okay, immediate. I know it's popular this week. I know a lot of voices on our station have decided it's time to start using the, it's time to fire. Fire them. They're 19 and 23, fire him. Some people felt that way before the year. I get that. I just don't, I'm not going to whittle it down that sort of way. There, there are holes in his game. You're not going to hear me say otherwise. Right. You have right. in the past, you won't now. There have been a tremendous number of mistakes. 
And this is a lifeless organization right now. And that is on his watch. So I'll agree with you completely there. I'm just not going to go into this series and be like, if Matos and Ramos and Schmidt don't look good, that's a bad three days for Farhan. I, that, that feels a little... That feels a little too bottlenecked to me. You, For me, you know, you know what I'm saying? I know exactly what yeah. you're saying, and I'm not saying that they should fire him. I don't think that they should, and I know that they won't until, I don't think, until the end of the year, unless this thing really craters beyond control. And I think all these injuries now, they've given Farhan a little bit more leash, honestly. If the Giants go out and they win seven of their next 28, and it's a complete disaster, and Lee is out for seven weeks and Solaire struggles to come back, and you don't have Murphy, and you don't have Slater, and you're playing a lot of these AAA or 4A guys, and the Giants' season completely goes off the rails, I think that gives Farhan a little bit extra leash because of the injuries as an excuse. Maybe, maybe. Uh, let's go live to the other room to Dib's best friend, Mark Grandy. My guy. For this Giants lineup against Yoshinobu. Yamamoto. Yep. Fish our lineup tonight against the Dodgers. Yastrzemski's leading off. Uh, Estrada Chapman, followed by Lamont Wade, Flores, Ramos, and the final third, Sable, Matos, and Schmidt with uh, Jordan Hicks on the bump. Jordan Hicks on the mound against Otani, Freeman, and Betts. Sable, Matos, and Schmidt. Yeah. Sack, sack, sack. Ramos, too. All yeah. four of them, they're going to hit in a row. Yep. Ramos, Ramos, six. Sable, seven. Matos, eight. Schmidt, nine. Four they're sacks they're in, a hit in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Blake Sable's our best they're hitter. Like, they're like a little river of cats. Totally. You know what I'm saying? That's a three. Yeah. At the bottom of the lineup there. I okay. didn't think it was a three, but I went for it. It's no, I fine. liked it. Yeah. And no, you it sold was, it. It was well paced. No, it was stupid, but it was meant to be stupid. Yaz leading off. You want to know the real, the real bummer? of all the bummers with Jung Hoo Lee getting hurt, is we're going back to life without a leadoff hitter again. Yeah, I thought that the biggest bummer is what he does in center field. Because when there's a drive or a high fly ball or anything in the outfield that might be in the center field vicinity, and then, you know, the ball, the camera goes up to find the ball, and then gradually you come down and you look at the fielder, and he is a lot of fun to watch patrol center field. Um, he's, and I'll miss that. He's incredible. He's absolutely that catch in Philadelphia. That might be the highlight of the year for this team. Wow, I know. I mean, the Sorry. Chapman Grand Slam was that Friday. Yeah, it was just a home run. No, you but that, I mean? like for yeah. him to do that, it's incredible. But, and the Casey Schmidt walk off was pretty good. But the wow moment, the True. wow, the wow yeah. factor. That's all I mean. I don't mean it was the best moment. It right. was just a catch in center field. But like the wow factor highlight, I got it. That that stands out to me as like, what the hell was that? That was incredible. Um, nobody thought he was going to get to that ball. No. Let alone catch it. So that was incredible. Um, that's the lineup. Golly. Yep. Yoshinobu Yamamoto, the guy the Giants were salivating yeah. over, is coming to town for his first game against the Giants, and the River Cats are facing him. Damn. Yeah. You want to hear the Dodgers lineup? No. <laughs> okay, I won't do it. Yes. They have a, a player with 11 home runs uh, hitting in their sixth spot on the order. Is that Max Muncy? No, it's Teoscar Hernandez. Oh, that guy. Uh, but Mookie Betts, <laughs> Shohei Otani. Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, Max Muncy, Teoscar Hernandez, Lux, Pages, Outman. So you get to a, a couple of guys, you probably... Go through those names again and then yell when you get to Dude, the, the first... Dude, Otani's your no, plucky little two-hitter. Get, get first, <laughs> the first name that you get to that wouldn't be the Giants' third hitter. Read them again. Uh, Betts, yes. Otani, yes. Freeman, yes. Smith, yes. Muncy, yes. Teoscar Hernandez, yes. Lux, yes. Pages. That one. Yep. The eighth hitter. Pajes. Sorry, Granny. Just call Pajes. him Pages. Yeah. Whatever. I don't even know who he is. I don't know is. who he is either. Yeah. Rookie. Kim <laughs> Lucas correcting Grandy. Probably, best Luke. Baseball gonna, too, you know. He's probably gonna put one in the drink tonight. Yeah. And I'm gonna Man. go get it out of the ocean. Shoot. I'm not enjoying this at all. I don't like like the Dodgers are in town. The Dodgers are in town. Right. You're supposed to feel the the fever of the rivalry, but what you said about everything you've heard from Giants fans, and I kind of have the same feeling about the just get one. Are there going to be just get one chance tonight? <laughs> just of, get one. Instead of Jung Hoo Lee. Right. 
Jess. Don't get, get swept. Dude. Don't get swept. Oh my god. Don't get swept. Are they going to be drowned out by the uh, by the chance of actual Dodgers fans? Mm. That's actually my thing. It's with, a great question. Yeah, thanks, Doc. I, I, like, How soon until we get the first wave tonight? Oh God! At, and we talked about this last week, and you don't like it, but would it be inappropriate? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> totally. Is it inappropriate for me to green light? Mild violence. Yes. It is, right? Yes. Okay, then I won't. I can do that. Okay. It's in my lane. All right. So what? It's, it's wildly outside right. of your lane. I'm not a violent guy. No. no but like. And you're going to mildly green light violence. What should Giants fans do if they're sitting next to Dodgers fans who try to start the wave? Politely ask them to not do that. <laughs> uh, excuse me, sir. You're blocking my son's view. <laughs> We're looking for Lucille. We're gonna hit it. Of course, you gotta hit it. Yes, again. We're presented by Fremont Bank.